Uh, hello, um, welcome to my video diary number four, I think I'm up to. Um, today I just finished um, reading through the first half of this book, which, if you can't see it, it's uh, Bridget Picking Kelly's uh, Poems, Song, and The Orchard, which I think it's probably backwards. Um, but I just finished sort of rereading re Poem Song, and I'm about to reread uh, The Orchard, um, two really great books um, by Bridget Pekin Kelly, um, who's a really uh, a great poet. And I was just thinking about her work um, and how kind of strange it is. Um, she begins many of her poems in these settings that are, um, they feel familiar, right? Um, one of the, the last poem in the book, um, in poem song, um, begins with uh, Three Cows in the Moon. We were playing baseball on the hill by the cow field. It was late March. Seems, you know, uh, fairly normal. And the next part of the line, the trees were getting dark. The moon was coming up. We couldn't see it yet starts to get a little ominous right uh and the trees were getting dark the 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 land wasn't getting dark right the things weren't getting dark the trees were getting dark and i find that aspect of the the poem continues kind of like that getting more and more ominous and kind of the prose picks up speed or the the, the poetry with the lines pick up speed um and she takes a lot of her poems and she wraps this like really meticulous um symbolism right that is very um that's what I'm looking for. It's very hard to grasp entirely um, what she's doing, especially upon first reading it. But when you reread, you begin to notice all these little things. And you get, begin to pick up on um, the symbolism takes a meaning of its own apart from like traditional imagery um, and apart from, you know, any kind of Greek or, or, or any kind of mythos, right? She almost creates her own mythos through this, um, utilizing Catholic imagery and Greek and Roman imagery, but then her own images that seem to just come from her own head um, that creates this amazing mythos that um, not a lot of poets can really succeed with. Um, I'm thinking like Blake is another poet um, who, who, who succeeds in creating their own mythos, or Eliot, right, um, in the wasteland, Dickinson, um, uh, only a couple poets, you know, that can really create their own mythos and kind of sustain it in a way that's um, actually makes sense, right? Uh, um, uh, Dr. Seuss or whatever. Um, I'm just kind of, I'm kind of joking. Um, but another poem, the first poem, which is a fairly famous poem called Song, in it, the first line in that one goes, listen, there was a goat's head hanging by ropes in a tree. And it's like, Okay, now we're in it, right? We're immediately in it. But it's it's a weirdly, um, it's a weird image, right? Um, but it's also kind of weirdly familiar, right? Uh, this thing hanging from a tree, right? It's it's not unimaginable, right? It, you can imagine a goat's head hanging in a tree, right? But it's definitely abnormal, right? It's definitely weird. And the poem uh, has a lot to say about masculinity and about... Um, uh, things that we treasure, um, about loss, about love. Um, but then it's also just this deeply weird, deeply symbolic, deeply resonant poem. Um, and many of the same kind of images pop up throughout of all of Bridget Piggin's, Brid Bridget Piggin Kelly's poetry. Um, and she only published three books in her lifetime, um, uh, which is, is well, I think, one in the 80s, one in the 90s, and then one in the early to mid 2000s um the orchard which was up for the pulitzer prize and in my opinion should have won that year but nobody was asking me i was like 14 um but uh 13 something like that um but like some of the images that repeatedly show up in her work are animals with people's faces um uh dying deer um uh what are some others uh um animals that have been killed or mutilated by human beings. Um, uh, in the orchard, um, there's repeated images of orchards and, um, and, uh, and uh, fruit 
and um, gardens and all these different things. Um, just looking through a couple of her poems, you can find these things repeated over and over. Um, uh, just um, the doe lay dead on her back in a field of asters. No. And then there's a poem later um, in the orchard, um, which um, uh, black legs. The sheep has nipples, the boy said, and fur all around. The sheep has black legs. His name is Black Legs. In a cry like breaking glass, the glass is broken, the glass is broken, the milk falls down. Right? This image of a, 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 <laughs> this image of a uh, sheep, which is fairly normal, but the sheep has nipples, right? Which is really interesting to the boy, right? Which is normal for a sheep to have, but it's strange to point it out, right? And then the sheep, for the sheep to have black legs, normal for a sheep, right? But it's kind of strange when you focus in on it. And then for a, to call a sheep black legs, right, is kind of like pretty normal for, for, for uh, uh, a, a little boy, right, to name something uh, so simply. Um, but then a cry like breaking glass, right? And, and maybe the sheep's cry actually sounds like that, like it like breaking glass, but it's also evocative of something being broken, right? Something kind of ominous, something kind of not quite um, on point or not quite um, normal, right? Um, signifying what's to come later in the poem. Um, and the poem ultimately ends, um, <laughs> spoiler alert um, for some of these poems, I guess, but um, the poem ultimately ends, um, and the boy said this, I'm a boy and not a man. My legs are two and they shine black as the arrows that drop down on my throat in my chest to draw out the blood the bright animals feed on those with wings those without the ghost of the heart whose hunger is addressed from my song right a very strange um, kind of image but the ghost of the heart whose hunger is addressed from my song um, wow what a, what a two lines just incredible then the next poem the wolf begins the diseased dog lowered her head as i came close you know uh, a perfectly thing, uh, something that we can imagine, right? That sets us in the real, but is 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 immediately um, strange or evocative in some way that we may not um, realize. Um, <laughs> but um, I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about her poetry because I find it really interesting. Um, and then I was just thinking about other. Um, there's a whole dialogue on Twitter now about people getting canceled for for their um what books right they have not canceled but like uh oh you shouldn't date this 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 boy or you should be aware of this man if he has a a copy of lolita or a copy of uh infinite jest or um ayn rand ayn rand i agree with because ayn rand sucks um but but the other two it's just kind of silly one of them had goethe listed like faust or i don't know um uh, and Turgenev, I think fathers and sons, and it's like, what, what did Turgenev do? Um, uh, and I just think those things are kind of funny, um, though they're kind of silly how they like come and dominate the discussion. Um, and I was wondering, like, I have so many books. Um, I own a copy of Infinite Jest. Um, I own a copy of Lolita. I own a copy of <laughs> Goethe's Faust, uh, fathers and sons. I don't have any Ayn Rand because she sucks so hard. Um, or Bukowski is also on the list, but you know, it seems to me strange um, to think about what people enjoy to read and how that reflects on the individual. And it, it could be true that it could reflect badly on, on people or influence them. But I think if people are um, reading things with nuance and understanding, right? It's not like Cormac McCarthy is going to make me go out and want to uh, scalp people or whatever, um, uh, even though he writes about that happening in his books. Um, Though I think that's also involved in the discussion, uh, a different discussion, you know, of, of like what kind, how, what effect does media have on us and things like that. Um, I don't think anybody would cancel me for Bridget Begin Kelly or uh, dislike me for her work. Uh, I hope not because she's like one of my favorite poets. She's so amazing. Um, and uh, if you haven't read her, check her out.